Yep, looks like we're ready. <laughs> now, this is um, getting close to the last, not quite the last, but almost the last of these um, videos for Chapter 1. You knew that there could be so much to talk about with Chapter 1, or that I could talk about it so inefficiently and slowly. <laughs> Actually, this is just important stuff. Worrying about basics of data... Um, we don't have much time allotted to it in the course, but it's actually important, so it's critically important, so I'm trying to compensate a little bit here. So, talking about examining categorical data. So, this is descriptive analysis again. We've been talking about descriptive analysis, calculating means, standard deviations, range, interquartile range, all of these things. Any of the measures of central tendency or any of the measures of spread, um, variability, these, if you're just looking at one data set, then that's uh, descriptive analysis, because you're not making the leap to then say, what does that tell me about some population I, I don't have access to? So if you're just sticking with what you're looking at right now, this is descriptive statistics. So we're going to look at descriptive statistics for categorical data, which I actually like a lot. I like um, categorical data, and maybe it's because categorical data, you can't do a lot of the math with it, so you can't do a mean or a standard deviation or anything. I mean, you would code things as numbers and then calculate those things. But it, it was stupid. It would make no sense to do that. It's a mistake that gets made a lot, but it's a terrible mistake, and so don't do it. But um, because you don't have a lot of those mathematical things, uh, mathematical procedures available to you, I think perhaps that's why we have such fun graphic uh, things, graphic analysis procedures, just lots of graphing or, or tabular making neat tables out of things. And understanding this stuff is kind of its own little thing. There are statisticians who specify, who specialize in categorical data analysis because it gets really funky. In reality, we usually have a mix of categorical and numerical data types in any real analysis that we do. So let's move on. One of the classic ways to analyze categorical data is with bar charts. So let me just tell you that one of the main ways that we analyze categorical data is just counting the number of observations in each category. So if you have a, a variable where the levels, and levels means all the possible things that could happen with the variable, the possible values of that variable, where the levels are all, say, religious, religious affiliations, so it's like Catholic, Muslim, Jain, Buddhist, you know, Christian, other, etc. One of the easiest ways and one of the most valid ways to analyze that is just count the number of Catholics, count the number of Buddhists, count the number of other Christians, count the number of Jains, that kind of thing. So a lot of these analyses are based on just counting and subdividing the counting and counting in crossed categories and things like that. So bar charts, not to be confused with histograms, they represent one or sometimes more categorical variables. <laughs> So you're going to have one bar per category of the variable. Now, this is what happens with a histogram, too, right? You have one bar for every number category, but with a histogram, the numbers have an obvious order to them, and often they're continuous, and even if they're not, then you have to make decisions about where to split, like how, how frequently to um, make the bins. Okay, I'm going to do it every five numbers or every six numbers or every ten. But with bar charts, it's not numerical data, so... That doesn't make as much sense. But it's still the case that the height of the bars tells you the frequency. In other words, the number of observations associated with that bar. Now, ignore the stuff that's R code, unless you feel like doing R code. But this is a way to just get this built-in data set. R has a lot of built-in data sets. But pay attention to the graphs that we're going we're gonna to see here and what they're telling us. So there's a, a data set called Titanic, and it's a it's not a data matrix, so it gets a little confusing to deal with it. And that question mark Titanic will tell you if you're in R and you type that in, it'll tell you some information about it. So what the important thing to know is not that it's a four-dimensional array, etc., but that there's you should probably pay attention to the number of observations. Over 2,000, that's a lot. And only four variables. So let's list the variables. Variable number one, not that it has to be 